Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's virtual design review panel meeting. Today on our agenda, we are looking at the proposal for 117 Jackson Street East in Hamilton. I'm Edward Winter hosting this meeting and David Cluzio will be chairing this meeting. In addition to our panel members, we have the applicant team, city staff, members of the public and media observing today. Members of the public are welcomed here to observe the meeting only uh, with no comments or questions from the public today. This meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to the City of Hamilton's Design Review Panel webpage. Lastly, a reminder to our guests and panelists, please keep your microphones muted uh, when you're not speaking as we have a full uh, meeting here today. And thank you everyone for attending. David, please begin when you're ready. Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Edward, can you conf please confirm that this session is being recorded? Yes, we are recording. And are there any changes to the agenda today? No. Uh, then I just assume by silence that there are no uh, panel members that have conflicts of interest on this project. Okay, then on the agenda today is the review of 117 Jackson Street East. The lead planner on the file is Devin Morton. But Edward Winter will be making the presentation today. A little change in plan there. Uh, good afternoon, Edward. We're ready for your presentation. Please keep the presentation for under 10 minutes. Thank you. All right, so we have 117 Jackson Street East. Proposed is a mixed use building composed of two towers, 39 stories and 30 stories respectively above a three story podium with 290 square meters of ground floor commercial space and 751 residential dwelling units with 366 parking spaces. This is an aerial photo showing the subject's land out, outlined in red. This is a view of the subject site noted the that is currently a, a parking lot surface parking lot. This is viewing from the south east corner. Viewing from the southwest corner. Conceptual site plan noting the two towers east and west with the podium block below. This is part of the downtown Hamilton secondary plan. It is noted as downtown mixed use. Further, it's noted as high rise two, looking at a maximum height of 30 stories. For our discussion today, we're looking at four questions. Does the proposal complement the surroundings through building design and placement and the provision of pedestrian amenities? Looking at shadows and height, to what degree should new shadows be permissible? And could this location support additional height being requested? Height of the podium and relationship to the overall building composition. Could an increase in the podium height translate to a reduction in the overall tower height and improve the streetscape? And four, building massing along Jackson Street East. Does the proposed podium massing complement the surrounding built form and the pedestrian environment, or should the single massing be broken into a group of smaller masses along Jackson Street East? Stop sharing. Okay, thanks, uh, Edward. I, we're now ready for the consultant to provide additional information. Also, please keep the uh, presentation under 10 minutes. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is David Folletta, and I'm a registered professional planner with Bose Fields. We're the planning consultants on the uh, on the team. I'll be very quick because I think you want to hear from the architects. I just wanted to provide a bit of context. Next slide, please, Liam. So I'm going to be very fast to give Berardo, Berardo as much time as he can to walk you through uh, his vision uh, and the architectural design. Um, so again, I'm just going to 
provide a bit of uh, uh, a description of the surrounding context and height map. So next slide, please. And then I'll turn it over to Berardo. Uh, some of the things we wanted to highlight for you on this plan, I don't know if you can maximize that, maybe make it better for everybody to see, but I'm assuming everybody has seen the package that we submitted. Um, in terms of some key elements, the sites within the downtown, um, it has excellent access to existing and planned higher order transit, specifically the GO station uh, and the plan B line LRT along uh, King Street. Um, so, and then obviously there's a, a whole bunch of downtown amenities, including commercial amenities, entertainment, cultural, employment, recreational, and public services. Um, the one thing I wanted to sort of touch base on is uh, on the next slide. So if you hit the next slide for me, uh, Liam, um, as we all know, you know, the downtown especially has seen uh, a transition uh, to a more vibrant mixed use area that is uh, at transit supportive densities. And this has been guided uh, by planning policy and specifically the downtown secondary plan, which is the most recent planning document that applies to this area. And it really did study the downtown in the context of the provincial planning um, at, at the time. And some of the key principles that came out of that document uh, were uh, in specifically applying to new developments uh, is the importance of the public realm, uh, promoting downtown living and the need to add a permanent uh, population to the downtown. And then, of course, intensifying underutilized lands. And it especially identifies uh, parking lots as being a key, uh, easy target for intensification. And then making downtown healthy and safe. That, again, goes back to um, uh, really having that permanent residential population in the downtown core. And this has obviously resulted in numerous new intensification projects throughout the downtown. And what we've done here is just given you a snapshot of uh, stuff that's happening in the immediate surroundings. Uh, we know that we've got two 30-story towers that Laguna's building on the north side of uh, uh, of King Street. It's labeled Main Street here for some reason. We've got two 14-story buildings in the top right corner. Uh, we've got a number of, uh, of uh, other proposals and approvals that uh, occur. There's a 26-story building directly to the east of us and then a 27-story uh, uh, building uh, directly south of us that's uh, uh, proposed as well. There's also, as uh, Edward mentioned, some existing buildings, uh, including the existing tallest building in the city, the Landmark Place building, which is a 43-story tower directly north of us. So just trying to provide uh, a bit of character and a bit of context in terms of what's happening in the downtown core. Um, obviously, all of these projects that are occurring specifically within this area uh, are changing the built form character and it's advancing this, this, this vision that was established through the secondary plan of a dynamic downtown mixed use area with uh, transit supportive densities. Um, next slide, please. Just wanted to kind of highlight you know, some of the key elements of the surrounding uses that exist today. Um, so I'll be quick, but one of the things that we highlight here in this image is the vacant parking lots. And they are an opportunity to really start to fill in um, these gaps in the urban context. And uh, this is one of them. And it's obviously right at the center. Uh, and we've got existing taller buildings, uh, existing and approved uh, within the surrounding context. So we just wanted to highlight that for you. The next couple of slides are just some photos, and then I'll pass it on to Berardo. So this is a view of the site. So the parking lot's directly in front of us. This is our frontage onto Catherine Street. And then obviously you see uh, in the distance the uh, recently under constructed 23 uh, story building. And then to the left of the photo is the 43 story uh, existing tower. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a view across the street. So on the opposite side of Jackson, another vacant parking lot. Uh, and then we've got a mid-rise building. And then just beyond that mid-rise building is uh, the recent or the, the proposed 27 story tower. And then beyond that, you can start to see some of the escarpment elements. Um, next slide, please. Uh, th this is just a view looking uh, uh, looking at the subject site uh, down Main Street, just showing the, the, the height of that 43-story tower that, that exists today. Next slide, please. 
And then this is again is just another view of the subject site uh, and the parking lot uh, that's currently existing there today. Uh, looking south, uh, the rest of the, the these slides are just some of the context elements that we provided. But at this point, I'm going to pass it over to Berardo. So you can go to the next slide, um, Liam. And then obviously, there's probably a bunch of planning questions that have come out of uh, Edward's comments and we'd be happy to start talking a bit about height context that we rationalize in not only our planning rationale but also um, our uh, uh, submission to you. You can go right to the architectural plans, Liam. Yeah, that's a perfect way to start. So I'm going to pass it over to Berardo now and then again at the end we can answer those those fundamental questions about height and built form impacts. Thank you. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Barry Graziani, a principal at GC Architects. So I'll, I'll just quickly go through. So basically we have the two tower scheme anchored by a three story podium uh, with the Catherine Street to the left on the page and Jackson to the south. Um, if we go to the next slide, uh, the ground floor, uh, again, programmatically what we're proposing is at the corner of Catherine and Jackson to have re a retail frontage uh, we see that as being the most active uh, portion of the site. And then as we move along Jackson, uh, programmatically we would have indoor amenity and then centrally on the site halfway down the, the frontage along Jackson, that would be the main entrance to the development from a pedestrian standpoint. And then going along uh, the remainder of the frontage to the east, uh, we would have grade related residential units uh, fronting onto Jackson. Access for vehicular and servicing would be done off of an internal driveway off of Catherine uh, at the northwest corner of the property, giving us uh, room on our property for stacking distance both in and out of the parking structure that you see there in behind all the programmatic pieces fronting the streets. Um, if we go to the next slide, it's just the underground of which we have two levels. And then the next slide is going up to the second floor because we are proposing uh, three levels of above grade parking. Uh, however, the street frontages uh, would be uh, totally fronted with uh, residential units as you see in the light blue color. Uh, next slide goes up to the fourth floor. So now we are above the, the, call the formal podium height uh, and the two towers start to ex express their form shown in the blue. Um, and then the pink area would be a common amenity space, indoor amenity space that would link the two towers on this podium, uh, providing access to the green area that you see for the remainder of the podium as our outdoor amenity space. Uh, next slide shows the two tower floor plates, um, similar elements, but slightly different in form with the west tower that fronts onto Catherine and uh, uh, Jackson being stepped back at the corner to pull the actual tower away from the, the cor corner so that the pedestrian, room, uh, pedestrian realm can be defined by the podium. And then the east tower uh, shown there as, again, similar elements, but different form. These floor plates are under the 750 square meter maximum as per a tall building guideline. And the separation between the ta two towers that we are proposing is at 30 meters. Uh, next slide shows the elevation. So here we are actually looking north. So this is a south elevation fronting onto Jackson. So you can see the clear definition of the podium, which materially you'll see it in the perspectives, how that really does get defined and it is fragmented so that it's not uh, a continuous street wall, but there's varying setbacks from uh, Jackson to, to articulate that street frontage. And then the two towers that are proposed uh, with the banding at, at heights that re relates to surrounding context at the high level. However, throughout the tower, the stepping where the bands from one tower might be mid tower start to align with the other tower on the other side. So there's, there's this dynamic uh, uh, 
connection between the towers that, that's just very subtle, subtle through the architecture. Uh, I just want to flag your time is uh, running out here. So, okay, I, I, I just be aware of that. 30 seconds. So, the tower to the left is a lower one at 30 stories, and the tower to the right is at 39 stories. So, if we flip through, the next one is just the uh, north elevation. So, you can see the parking structure with fenestration. Um, and then, if we just keep going through the sections, which really don't have to describe those. Um, street elevations, the two end elevations. So here you start to see the materiality of the podium expressing itself uh, with the towers above. And then if we go to the next one, uh, this is a view uh, looking northeast from the corner of uh, Catherine and uh, Jackson uh, towards the two towers and the podium. And the next view zooms into that, that corner so you can see that there is the play where the, the podium is stepped back central uh, midway down the Jackson Street frontage for uh, the actual entrance and then the retail that wraps the corner. And then finally, the last slide, an aerial view showing it in context where the 39 story tower in height aligns with the existing uh, tower that is kind of kitty corner on Main Street at 43 stories, and we're proposing the 30-story tower to actually be at the corner of Jackson and Catherine. Okay, thank you for your presentation. At this point, I'll turn over to the panelists for clarification questions. Uh, and the first one is Eldon, if you could ask your questions. Yeah. Thanks, David. And uh, <clears throat> thank you for your presentation. A couple of quick questions of clarification. Um, in terms of the, uh, I noticed in your package, um, you included a, um, a shadow study and the shadow study played, uh, some specific attention to an open space. So park and open space area, uh, to the West. Um, is there the shadow study shows an as of right. Is there any information or do you have any information that shows a distinction between the two towers on your proposal relative to the shadows? Anybody? Maybe I'll, no, no, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Elton. I was looking for the unmute uh, question. Or oh, sorry, unmute button. Um, I think what you're getting at is does the additional height beyond the as of right trigger the uh, impacts to uh, to the uh, to the park? And and the answer is yes. Um, and and to be completely honest, we've we've uh, we've analyzed this in a lot of detail in our planning rationale as well as our submission to you. You probably got the uh, Coles Notes version of it, and, and ultimately. It's a slight impact to that requirement. So the, the shadow requirement is no new net shadows onto the forecourt of that building. And, and we studied that park uh, at, um, I wouldn't even describe it as a park, it's more of a forecourt. Um, and, and, you know, in, in our opinion, the, the slight shadow impact is, can be rationalized given that the function of that area is not, uh, it's already shaded by mature trees that are already shadowing those areas. So there really isn't an impact uh, to that uh, sitting area. Uh, so that, that's how we've analyzed it. And again, it's a very slight impact for approximately 51 minutes um, in between March uh, and September 21st. Thanks for that. And I think what I was getting to in, in my question was really about, and, and you noted you studied it, and I appreciate that. Um, the the difference between height is that in relation to that open that parks and open space location, or um, is there a specific rationale for the for the decision uh, on the heights of the towers? Yeah, maybe what I'll, I'll start in terms of that answer, and then I'll pass it over to Berardo to, to add some comments. Um, sure. You know, I, I think when you look at the drawings, it's quite clear that this site can accommodate the two towers very uh, easily. There's, there's a generous setback surrounding it. 
and from an intensification perspective, it it fits well. Uh, it provides more than enough amenity. It meets all the setbacks required, so they fit I'm, well. I'm not questioning that. So no, you don't, I, you don't I, have to soft sell you. that to me, David. No, I'm not trying to soft sell. I'm just trying to answer yeah. your question. And then, and then, in in terms of height, it's it's a uh, it was a it was based on a number of factors, as we all know, parking and setbacks and amenity drive the unit count. And then your built form is driven by all of those things, plus how it fits within the surrounding context. And, and when you look at this building and this image on the screen right now really illustrates that it fits well within this context. So I don't know, Berardo, if you have anything to add in terms of the building heights and how we arrived specifically at 39 stories. Yes, uh, there are a few factors. Actually, initially when we started massing out the site and, and studying it, we had the height at the corner of Jackson and um, and Catherine. Um, and then through further looking at the whole de development in context, we felt that it was better to actually pull the height away from the existing tower that uh, is, is adjacent to our property. And actually putting the shorter tower on the corner, it just it seemed that it, it, it gave more openness to the site, no matter where you looked at it from, rather than having you know two towers that are the same height right beside each other. Okay, thank you, thank you for the answer. Um, I, I apologize, I, I have to leave it too, but I know the rest of my fellow panel members will um, reflect my comments um, when it comes up. Thank you. Uh, Dana. Hi, um, thank you for the presentation. I just have a question for planning staff and it's in regards to section or page 46 of um, the handout that they gave us um, regarding OPA 167 and the doubling of the density as well as ministers modifications to delete the policy regarding the height cap to the Ni Niagara escarpment. Um, can you comment on that, um, whether there is still in effect a height cap for the escarpment or whether that has been modified um, in the city of Hamilton's official plan? The chair, Ken Coit here, uh, director of heritage and urban design. I don't believe we have anybody on the call from the OP group or from development planning. My apologies for that, but is my understanding the cap does remain in place for the area of the downtown secondary plan. It has been removed from the rest of the city. So it's my understanding it still applies in this location. Um, we'll correct that later if that is in fact wrong, but that is the understanding uh, we've been moving forward with. Thanks. And uh, Reno Dalbello here, development planning. Uh, yes, this is Reno Dalbello, development planning. With regards to the escarpment, yes, this property is still within regards to the height of the escarpment. So it still has to be maintained, even though the 167 OPA is in effect. This area in the downtown secondary plan still has to adhere to the height of the escarpment. Okay, so is this an official plan policy then? Yes, what it is. is. Okay, thank you. Do you have any other uh, questions, Dana? Uh, no, that's everything. Thank you. Ted? <clears throat> yeah, um, I guess one of the key questions I'd have is, um, you know, this project is pushing beyond the as of right um, allowance on the site and we often see then a, um, you know accommodations made to create a, a higher quality public realm uh, that's giving back to the community the neighborhood can you comment on what what uh, if what you see as uh, public realm ads on this project Maybe I'll start and then I'll pass it over yeah, to Ber Berardo. Oh, I didn't see you talking. Sorry, Berardo. Yeah. Um, it's okay. Go ahead. So I, I just want to add one clarifying element uh, because you're referring to our document and, and the height. And, and the reason we refer to OPA 167 is because it um, it has now updated the official plan for the entire city. So that's a parent official plan policy. Um, and the reason we quoted that is because that is – based on the current growth plan. And now the secondary plan that applies to the downtown has not been updated and it will eventually have to be updated. And we we're just highlighting the fact that there's more intensification that's needed, especially in the downtown. 
in terms of uh, giving back to the to the uh, public realm, that's a, that's a great question. I think what this project delivers, and you saw some of those renderings early on. I don't know if uh, Liam can go back to them. Um, the podium, the way that uh, the podium has been designed, it gives a lot of space and widens the public realm, and it obviously is a significant improvement from uh, the current parking lot that's there today. So it's going to really liven up and start to fill in those gaps that occur here. And again, as I mentioned earlier, that's one of those policy objectives, not only in the downtown, but across the city. Um, Gerardo, uh, over to you. Yeah, I'd just like to add to that, you know, the, the setbacks that we've provided for the podium are, are rather generous. Uh, you know, along Jackson, uh, where the central entrance is, it's set back eight meters from the property line, so probably closer to uh, 10 meters from the actual curb line. Um, and then at the corner as well, where we're proposing the, the retail space, we, we've pulled that back as well. It's set back you know, 10 meters in both directions from the actual corner. So there's opportunity for you know, restaurants to actually spill out into the public realm and really activate that entire frontage. Thank you. Um, Jennifer. Hi, thanks, David, and thanks for your presentation. Um, along a similar questioning line of questioning from Ted about giving back, um, if if we are to assess the viability of protruding through the the escarpment line what does this project give back and so i was wondering if there are any sustainability goals um that that this project aims to achieve um, we're in a housing crisis yes but we're also in a climate crisis so i'm wondering what the response to that is so at this time like we haven't gotten into that level of details regarding sustainability but um as we doing all the developments that we're involved in, uh, we, we push for obviously the, the sustainability measures to, to be implemented as much as we can in the developments. So that's something we'll have to get into more detail with talks with the city as well as the actual landowner and developer. But right now we, it's just too early in, in the process for us to have looked into that yet. Yeah, maybe I'll just, Add a couple of comments that, that, that you know, Jennifer, that that's a great question and it's becoming more and more important to really start to think about these things early on in the process. And I know that the city is advancing sustainability guidelines. Uh, they're not yet in place, but um, uh, we're, we're obviously eager to, to work with the city to start to implement sustainability elements, especially on a, a site like this. So uh, really, we'll take that back and have those answers for you. Thank you. The other Jennifer, sorry, I just <laughs> differentiate between the two of you. Uh, that's fine, thanks, David. Um, so thank you, Edward, David, and Gerardo for your presentations. Uh, I was hoping you could maybe tell us a little bit about the design intent for the uh, residence indoor and outdoor amenity space on the fourth floor. What was the fourth floor? Um, specifically, are, are you asking about like programmatically what we're thinking of putting in there or? Yeah, just to have a, an understanding of what you're thinking of proposing. Um, again, we haven't gotten to that level of detail. That's why it's shown as a pink box right now. But, uh, you know, with uh, other developments, what we're seeing now is uh, a, a, almost like a demand or a, uh, a desire for smaller spaces so that more people can actually utilize the indoor amenity space. So. Obviously, we'll have fitness rooms and things like that, but when it gets to the more what would have been a multi-purpose room or a party room or that kind of element within the indoor amenity, what we're doing now is creating many more spaces that, that are smaller in scale so more people can use them, but there's the opportunity to combine two or three or four of them for lar larger functions so, so that the residents have more access or ability to access the, the amenities that we're providing. As the outdoor amenity, again, you know, th there's a lot of ideas that we have, uh, but nothing's been nailed down uh, specifically yet. Uh, in some developments, what we've done is actually created outdoor 
uh, fitness stations that are that are you know, it's like a walking area with fitness stations that people can use. There's going to be the uh, outdoor uh, like dining areas and barbecue areas for for people to use, and then within the actual indoor amenity space, we would also have like private dining rooms because we do realize that you know the, the suites keep getting smaller and smaller as time goes on due to affordability. However, if somebody wants to have you know, a group of friends or family over, sometimes, sometimes these units are just too small to accommodate, say, you know, 10 people. So we have these private dining facilities that people can utilize for those types of functions so that they're not, you know, kind of left out of having those types of interaction with friends and family. I had one more question and it was about the retail that you've shown at the corner. I think it's a little under 300 square meters. I was just wondering if you've looked into the potential demand for this area or if there was a reason you didn't consider more retail. Uh, when we were looking at the, the retail, this is through a discussion we've had with the actual landowner and what they feel is uh, you know, reasonable and, and leasable. Um, so regardless of the actual amount in square footage, what we wanted to ensure as the architects for the development is that it is good retail. Um, so with that, we're proposing a larger height for the retail so that all the plumbing that's coming up, coming down from above gets transferred out. Structurally, we can create more usable open spaces for the retail and still maintain a, a higher ceiling height. But as far as the quantum of it, it's through discussions that we've had with uh, the landowner and developer. Thank you, that's all my questions. Um, you can keep this plan on. There's a couple of questions I have just for clarification. I noticed that there is a laneway to the north of the property and you're not taking advantage of that in your own circulation. Can you elaborate on I mean, we were looking at other proposals and they take advantage of the laneway. Yeah. Why are you not can, doing that? Okay, I, I can speak to that. Uh, initially, we were um, using the, the north laneway as a shared laneway, but there were encumbrances on that laneway from the property to the north. Legal or not, I, I don't know. It was just restricting the, uh, uh, the width of an access, access through. Um, and then the other concern that we were trying to deal with is that when our vehicles do come out to, uh, to Catherine, that there would be visibility. So we didn't want to have, you know, a, a very narrow throat out to Catherine. So by putting the, the, call it our driveway totally on our property, that, that gives us more width and visibility to see pedestrians. Plus, we control that portion of the laneway. Okay. Um, the other question I have is on your drawings, you're showing a road widening, and I'm not quite clear on what the imp or there. There's some kind of road widening on along Jackson Street identified, and I don't know what that impact that will have on your landscape plan. And for example, the trees and whatnot. Um, is this plan showing it with or without the road widening, I guess? This plan as it's shown right now is showing it without the road widening. However, the architectural plans as far as below grade and the setbacks that I was mentioning earlier, they are from the widened uh, road. Yeah, maybe, so, maybe I'll just add to that. I, I think those street trees, um, the north edge of those street trees uh, would form part of the widened road allowance. So those trees are, they're illustrated on your plan, but they're actually going to be on city property. Is that the idea? That's the idea, correct. So you're gonna provide them? Or yeah, it's typically just... what happens in the city, yeah. You plant them as part of, um, uh, as part of your development, and then be, they become owned by the city. Okay, I think that's all the questions. Um, go to uh, for comment to. Unfortunately, Eldon is uh, 
had to step out. Um, but he did join in our earlier conversation. And so I think we have a sense of his position on this. Uh, we'll go to Dana. Sure. I just want to say thank you to the proponent and the city team for an excellent um, and well thought out presentation. Um, this is a truly a, like a, a large landmark project for the city's downtown. And I commend you for all the design work that you guys have put in so far into this project. Um, I currently don't have any issues with going above the height of the escarpment in this downtown location for a couple of reasons. First, we're in a housing crisis. Secondly, this is downtown. Um, and third, um, you know, we don't want all of our buildings in the downtown to be of a similar height. I think we want a variety of heights um, for four different buildings. But I do think kind of as Jennifer had mentioned, there, there should be something that you guys give back above and beyond, whether that's through sustainability, whether that's through affordable housing, or whether that's through exceptional architecture and design through this project. So um, I would consider um, ensuring that you're providing your best possible package as you move forward. Um, in response to the city's question, I'm not sure that lowering the tower height and putting um, some of those units on the podium uh, would really contribute to the streetscape as we're looking for um, visual elements and visual cues towards the escarpment, which would be through skylight, um, sky view, um, and seeing seeing past a podium versus having those extra few stories um, impacting the escarpment view. So in terms of view shed and view analysis, I think those those elements would be more important than um, taking off a few stories at this time. Um, in terms of the tower elements and the architecture, um, as you move forward, I would consider having a good look at the architecture of the building. I'm wondering if, um, with respect to the towers, if some architectural simplicity um, would um, benefit this design. There's some heavy horizontal banding that I feel does take away from the overall design. I think um, in terms of strength in this design, I think the focus needs to be on the base. This is the pedestrian element. This is the streetscape. This is where users will experience the tower mostly. Um, I think that the important part is ensuring that there's weather protection at the base, um, a podium that you know provides some articulation and detail, um, adequate streetscaping, um, good amenity space, and just an overall pleasant experience at the base where the retail is, where the amenity is, as well as the residential units. Um, I would consider, I'm not saying that you have to do this, but look into playing with rotating the corner tower. I think that's the 30 story tower um, in the other in 90 degrees, just to see if that provides, um, you know, maybe shadow benefits to the park, um, but also look at how um, that may provide less overlook between the landmark tower to the north as it would be the more narrow edge. So I would ask you kind of to explore that as you move through detailed design, as well as adding some sustainability and affordable um, housing to this uh, project. I think that's everything for me. Uh, Ted. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I would uh, agree that the intensification on this site makes a lot of sense. I would agree with the diversity of height that you've provided um, as a means of of giving it character versus, you know, both of those towers topping out at the same height. I think the 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 variation, the four different heights, uh, I think gives it a, a, an intrinsic quality that uh, is um, very positive. Uh, and I also appreciate the attempts to break the two massings into what seem to be four vertical towers through the through the fenestration and articulation of the facades. Um, I think there's good programmatic treatment um, uh, to both uh, Catherine's and Jackson Street. Um, I think that's an area we'd like to. I we I'd like to see. A further development and further understanding of it. Um, I think the servicing and the parking access, the way it's concealed, um, and the placement of residential and retail around the two facades to conceal that parking, I think is working well. Um, I would support uh, Dana's comments on height. Um, generally, uh, this 
if if it's higher, I think that's a city policy that they need to decide, um, agree to either allow or or not. But generally, if if there were height in the downtown, that seems like an appropriate place for it to happen. Um, I I think the 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 depth and variation of uh, setback on Jackson Street. Um, sounds good um it's hard to really get a sense of that the the landscape plan uh gives some more detail however the renderings are uh we saw a more zoomed in version here in the presentation but it, it's hard to understand what the quality of that streetscape is and i think it is very important that that is a high quality public realm space um, for a project that is um, achieving such density. Um, that is, I think, a key area that um, this project wants to give back to the public realm, making Jackson Street a really fantastic street for people to, to spend time on. Um, I think there is uh, an opportunity with the roof podium to, to see in, in the same vein to create uh, a a public realm for the residents, in effect, uh, of this cement of this project, uh, also for future towers to be looking down on. What is the quality? Is there green um, green space up there? Are there is there plants vegetation that 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 contribute and give back in in different ways at that po podium level? Um, the 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 sustainable this this is appears to be primarily a glazed building with um, uh, what we'd call thermal break projections at balcony levels. Um, so we know that this is potentially not performing well from an energy perspective, and it, it would be great to um, see this project again and understand to a better degree how it's going to perform well from an energy perspective. Um, and, and ultimately, uh, ideally would like to see this project again because it is such a, uh, a large scale project and it's going to have such a prominent impact to the downtown visually, but also in bringing this area as, as was mentioned as, as a lot of parking lots and is, is a bit desolate. This has a great opportunity to set the, set the, uh, uh, the bar for the future development of this downtown space. So it would be great to see this again at a, at a greater level of resolution and detail. But thank you very much for your, your presentation. Uh, Jennifer Mallard. Um, great comments so far, and, and I'm, I'm going to elaborate on some of them. Um, I agree with Dana and Ted that height is a good thing in this neighborhood. Um, but I, I disagree with Ted and Dana at one point that I, I think the rule on the escarpment, the height relative to the escarpment is an important one. Um, it, it's there, it's very particular to Hamilton, um, and it, it wasn't removed in the downtown core for a reason. Um, and I, I, I think, you know, the 1979 uh, building may, may protrude that line i'm not quite sure on that but but um it's a slippery slope and that's my fear that if we we uh allow some things to happen then everybody will be uh trying to poke through that invisible barrier and and i think there's value to that to that rule so um uh i i think you can build densely in the downtown without breaking that rule um, uh, moving on to the design of the tower, um, there, there's the kink in Jackson Street, which generates the kink in the floor plan that we see on the screen here, which then generates a kink in the tower. And it's a very slight kink in the tower, but it's like the tail wagging the dog. So I wonder if the tower can be made rectilinear, uh, more pure in form, um, um, or a, a, a change in the orientation of the tower. I think Dana, you suggested rotating at 90 degrees, um, but it just seems that, that it's either, it's not enough of, a, of an architectural move um, or the justification for it is, you know, just simply 
the column grid in the parking garage. And it, so I think um, the design of the tower should should trump the rule of the efficiency of the parking grid in the garage. Um, uh, the the podium expression uh, built it's brick, it's terracotta colored. It seems to echo a lot of the downtown core um, uh, warehouse buildings, which I appreciate that contextuality. Uh, but but the the design of the podium is quite different from the towers. It feels like those are two different developments. Um, uh, I agree with Ted's comment about the this step backs on on the ground plane being a good thing to make hospitable ground plane spaces, but I do think the design of the podium uh, lacks a clarity because of that. So I, I think there's a happy medium there somewhere that um, making a, a clarity in the base that is maybe more talking to the towers, but also um, uh, maybe also more talking to the to the really historic sort of really rigid bay form of the of the warehouse buildings that are downtown. Um, I agree with my colleagues about the concerns on the trees on the ground plane, and uh, it's true that adding trees is a is an improvement to to this parking lot that has no livability right now. But but if we're really uh, restoring livability in downtown Hamilton, it's a city where there are parks with very big trees or broad streets with very big trees. And I think that should be our aim, not um, we, we just need to make sure that that tree canopy is healthy and viable. And those are my comments. Thanks. Uh, Jennifer Seiss. Thank you. Um, so I want to start off by saying, you know, I'm always happy to see development on surface parking lots. And I think you've been thoughtful in the way that you've designed the ground floor and how it addresses the public realm. I'm happy to see uh, that you've talked the parking in behind. You've provided a bunch of shade trees and some public seating along Jackson in particular. Uh, you've addressed a Jackson Street with those residential units, and they're kind of a mirror to what's happening on the other side of the street. And flanking that corner with the finer scale retail and the thought you put into that, I think is really good and helps activate the streetscape. Uh, I'm happy also to see some bike parking for the retail uses, but considering that this is a very prime location and the scale of this development, I'd like to see a bit more consideration for enhancing the streetscape, some more parking um, or bike parking apologies. Um, I do appreciate also the, the flexibility that you've uh, kind of described for us, Barardo, in the indoor outdoor amenity space design uh, and all of those elements you've noted. I really hope to see in that reflected in the final design. Uh, I do agree with my co panelists. Uh, I also have concerns with the building length as well as the shadow impacts on the courtyard public space. While you've noted that impact is not major, the policy for shadow impacts on public land is no new net impacts. And uh, while I'm echoing Jennifer here, I think making an exception in this case would really set a precedent that could have significant impacts in the future and really require some careful consideration. Um, one suggestion I do have for you for potentially improving the streetscape, uh, you could potentially pull the underground parking a little bit away from Catherine Street to allow for additional street tree planting and soil cells on this frontage as well. I think you might be able to achieve this, excuse me, by narrowing some of the parking driveways underground from seven and eight to six meters. Uh, overall, I really look forward to seeing the final design for this very promising development. Thank you all for your presentations and time. So, um, I'm not sure how much I have to add to my colleagues. Mostly I'm in agreement with them. I am a little comment, just to, it's unfortunate that you were unable to solve that shared driveway lane situation because, of course, it means that there's more driveways onto uh, Catherine Street because of the retained lane. It would be, I, I mean, I'd, I'd wonder if you couldn't look back at that because also that might allow you a little bit more flexibility in your ground and create even more setback on Jackson uh, by looking at that, though. 
I mean, I agree with a lot of the things that you're doing, uh, and I'm echoing my colleagues when I say that the strategy of concealing the parking deck behind residential on the lower levels and the character that you've you're you're working on bringing to the street I, I agree that it it could use with some refinement and improvement um and the relationship between the towers and the character of the lower podium also i feel could be refined uh, uh as well it is it does seem to be disconnected i my observation was that maybe even the the tower and the component on Long Jackson that is associated with the entry could be stronger connection, at, at least in that area between the tower and the and the lower levels. I'm I'm I, I'm not I'm not a big fan of the tower rendering. Uh, I, I seem to have seen it in other locations, and it's it's I, I I feel it could you could go with something a little bit more sophisticated, or as uh, maybe others have said, a stronger connection to the ground plane. Um, in terms of the the height and the both the relationship to the escarpment uh, height uh, and view protection, as well as the shadow, I I I uh, I'm certainly in support of density downtown, but I'm also concerned uh, with those two, uh, you know, setting precedents for those two. I I, th I feel that if you were creating an exceptional project that was really delivering something uh, noteworthy because I mean the other project that we've we've seen that broke this 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 height was an exceptional tower down on the waterfront and they made a very specific argument and it was it was pretty uh, you know they were they were aiming for an incredible level of design excellence and also had very high ambitions in the sustainability. Uh, um, ask and and had stated it quite explicitly in the documents. I mean, there were a lot of special aspects about that particular one, but I think that the ambition that they brought to that is the kind of ambition that we would be looking for if we were to, or at least this is my more personal, because it's obviously not shared by every member of the panel here, but um, I think that that exceptional quality be what we, what we, I'd be looking for if I was to say, oh, I'm going to, support in this instance the breaking of this strata uh, across the downtown and um, I, I don't think you're there yet I, I think that if you want to make that argument I mean if you came to me and uh, take, came to us and said this this residential tower is going to be a passive house tower or or something along those lines I would say this is exceptional I think the city should support it and they can make an exception to that to that that uh height limitation in this instance because of that, because it would also be setting a bar if anybody else came, they too would have to be delivering it to that level. And uh, I think that would, you know, I, in some ways reinforce the value of that, that it's only by doing something truly exceptional that you would be allowed to go beyond that. So um, I'm just checking my notes to see if there's anything uh, else that, I noticed there were some issues Lagged at the wind mitigation on the upper level, but I'm sure that you will follow through on that as you develop this in more detail. And I, I agree with Ted; it would be it would be great to see where this project goes, and if we could uh, provide any other input later on in the in the process. Um, I, I I would wonder if it's possible to imagine that the residential units along Jackson Street to the to the east there could be designed with the possibility that if this area does take off. That they could become not residential, but be turned into uh, some kind of public amenity or retail in the future uh, as well. Other than that, I, I don't really have any further comments. I don't know if you have any uh, questions uh, for the panel, of, or, or, or if we're good. Otherwise, uh, I, I thank you very much for your presentation. It's fairly clear and uh, uh, understand. Uh, what you've gone forward and I look forward to seeing further development. I mean, I, I agree that this level of density, if just a little bit shorter, maybe uh, in this site uh, is definitely, uh, well, I'd love to be able to say strongly that I support it even at this height that you were doing something exceptional. So if you come back with something really amazing on some of these other levels, I, I'd, be a, I'd be a fan as well. So uh, good luck with this uh, project. Thank you.
Great. Well, thank you everyone. It sounds like this is the end of our first meeting. We'll take a 15 minute break and we'll come back for a second meeting. Thank you everyone for pres your presentation today. Thanks. Thanks.